pigmentosa. So what is retinitis pigmentosa? Um, if you recall earlier, I mentioned there are 120 million rods and 6 million cones inside our eye in the retina. The rods, 120 million, are responsible for our night vision or when there is not enough light. In retinitis pigmentosa, those photoreceptors get damaged. So in low light situation, patients start having problems seeing. So they start with poor night vision. At night, if this is what a normal person sees, a patient with retinitis pigmentosa will think it's a very dark night. Maybe it's not. It's just their photoreceptors have been damaged. Eventually, they will also start losing sight vision. And eventually, they can get totally blind. So that's the extent of it. Next slide. Um, right night is early signs, decrease in night vision, loss of sight vision, late symptoms can all the way to blindness. How do you diagnose this? Of course, family history is very important. If one family member has it, the rest of the family should be checked by an experienced eye doctor. Uh, they look into the eye and there are several kinds of tests they can do for that. Uh, treatment really at this point there is no treatment for retinitis pigmentosa. We have ways of helping patients preserve this or slow down the process, um, but there's no permanent treatment for retinitis pigmentosa at this time. So there are low vision aids, vision rehabilitation is what we might use. Next slide. Um, just to show you what retinitis pigmentosa looks like to us when we look into the eye, here's the normal eye. This is the macula, and this we see these pigmented uh, areas uh, as the retina gets damaged. Let's go to the next slide. So, to prevent further vision loss in retinitis pigmentosa, we encourage several steps. They will slow the process down, doesn't necessarily stop it. So, avoid place with too much light, night vision goggles, low vision aids, color filters, all kinds of things. Foods rich in antioxidants, dairy products, fish oils, uh, avoid fatty foods, sunglasses, exercise, wear protective eyewear. But none of this will get rid of the retinitis pigmentosa. It just slow it down maybe. Okay, next one. <clears throat> and there are about 30 different varieties of retinitis pigmentosa and they are not all the same. Uh, vitamin A is supposed to help in small amounts, not excessive amount of vitamin A because excessive amount of vitamin A can be toxic to other parts of the body. This is all under investigation. Um, I don't think any of this is widely available, even in the United States. Uh, it's, the availability is limited. Only few medical centers do this. And it's not open to all of the public. Next slide, I want to show you what this prosthesis look like. Oh, this is just to... Uh, investigative treatment of retinitis pigmentosa. It's the gene um, injection. Okay, next slide. And these are the prosthetic devices still under investigation, not available to the public, um, but they seem to work. Um, it's interesting, uh, what they do is they implant this um, array of micro into the eye in the back where the macula is, is connected um, to these goggles. There's a little camera here that takes the picture of whatever the person is looking at. Um, this is the battery here. Uh, it, this, and I, I can't read it, but it, it processes that video signal from that camera, converts that into radio frequency waves that are then transmitted um, to this the, um, receiver antenna around the eyeball which is connected to this area of micro electrodes inside the eye and from there the signal goes to the brain. It allows the patient to see something, not necessarily to see normally. The patient might see shadows but may not be able to recognize what those shadows are but it's better than nothing. This is still under investigation, not widely available. So just wanted to throw that out. I think that's a lot, okay?